Hello everybody, hope you're all doing really well. Uh, okay, so we're on the Isle of Skye. Uh, the weather so far has been kind of off and on a little bit. Last night we photographed uh, the castle down um, down by the bridge there. Sorry, I can't remember the name of the castle. I'll leave it, leave it at the bottom here. Today we've uh, taken a bit of a drive up to an area called Fairy Pools, which I'm sure a lot of you that uh, photograph in the UK will know all about. Uh, I, I hear it's a very popular area and I can see why it's just absolutely beautiful here. Uh, the weather right now, yeah, it's kind of, it poured with rain last night, but it's trying to clear. There are blue patches in the sky. So I'm hoping that at some point, actually you can almost see the summit of this peak here. So it'd be kind of nice to get that in the background because it's very moody looking. Um, I want to try and get something a little bit different than what I've seen online. Uh, I, I noticed most of the pictures are from a, a little waterfall down the, the uh, trail here with three little uh, waterfalls coming down with a mountain in the background. I'll probably do something similar, get that out of the way and then start looking for more intimate scenes because there's some really beautiful little areas down here uh, that I think would work really well, especially with the shrubs around the waterfalls. It's really quite, quite pretty. And actually, as I'm speaking, there's a little bit of light hitting the, the peak in front of me here. So I have hopes. <laughs> Right, so as a photography tourist, of course I'm going to take the uh, quintessential Isle of Skye shot of the fairy pools. I always thought that these uh, waterfalls were bigger than they are, but they're actually quite small. They're only about three or four feet high. So, you know, the standard shot is to try and get these waterfalls in the foreground. And then of course have the peak in the background. And actually the conditions are getting really quite nice right now, nice and moody. And I think I could do quite a bit with these bright clouds in the background. As long as you can see the summit of the peak, I found from experience in the past that if, if any of the top of any kind of peak or prominent peak is cut off, it doesn't quite do it. So it's just a matter of waiting for the clouds to clear a little bit from the very top and uh, it works really well. So I'll take the, the standard sky shot and then uh, try and find uh, something else to photograph. So uh, what do you think, Paul? Yeah, it's looking really, really nice. Nice little waterfall and the light's starting to meet the top of the peak in the background there. It's looking really good. Yeah. It's great because you have dark clouds above and then brighter clouds below. So you can warm those up a little bit and kind of make it look a bit, not quite as gloomy. Right. Well, I had a really great time at the Ferry Pools and it's certainly a beautiful area. What I wasn't expecting were the crowds. As the morning progressed, it just got busier and busier. And I was really surprised how many people visit this, uh, this section in the mountains here. Uh, if I went back to the Ferry Pools, I would probably go for a hike up into the mountains. It looks absolutely beautiful up there. And I think that as soon as you get off uh, the beaten track, then you would probably get away from the crowds. Nonetheless, it is a really cool area. Now, as far as this image goes, uh, it's okay. Uh, I think in, in this case, it probably would have done better uh, if there was a little bit more water. And as always, uh, some kind of directional light hitting the peaks perhaps, or something just a little bit more interesting. Now I did go ahead and take a few more landscape shots, but I think I probably should have concentrated more on the details within those landscapes. As an example, this image here, I, I like the composition. The problem with it is, is that it doesn't have any directional light hitting 
either the mountains in the background or the shrubs or grasses in the foreground. So a lot of those elements get lost in, in the whole image. It probably would have been more to my benefit to just concentrate on those uh, small vignettes or small intimate details within this scene. Now, if the light had been different, if we'd had more directional light, then it might have worked better. But in this case, it just doesn't work. All right, so the spot that uh, Paul and I were at earlier was actually not the spot we were thinking of, but that was quite good. But this is even better, but I suspect this is the area that everybody photographs. The nice thing about uh, right now is that the water levels are really low. So we're able to get in really close to that, uh, those cascades there, really emphasize and put them smack right in the foreground to really make the, the scene dramatic. So it works really well. I suspect uh, when the water levels are at normal heights, then it would be really hard to wade in. Because I brought my welly boots over, which uh, came in really handy on this trip. Now I didn't vlog uh, the actual photo when I was taking the photographs, but I, I think they turned out really good. The light keeps changing now and then. You'll get a blue patch and some bright areas in the sky, which was a little bit hard to deal with. Uh, so I just took a whole bunch of different exposures, like. Uh, some really underexposed for the, the brightest areas in the frame. And then if need be, I'll just combine those later on in uh, Photoshop. But yeah, this is a, a really pretty scene. Uh, I think it'll work out really well. Okay, I'm going to sound like a scratched record here and possibly even a parrot because I've said this so many times in past videos. But I'll say it again anyway. The most important aspect of any photograph is light. I don't care what anybody says about gear or composition or even subject matter, even though they come a close second and third and possibly fourth. For me, light is the key to good photography. Composition aside, I think most of you will agree that this image here is quite a bit more successful than the other two because it has some light in there. We have light hitting that peak. We have a bit of blue sky in there. We have lovely textures in the clouds. And also we have a great subject matter in the foreground, the, the waterfall. Now, as far as composition goes uh, for, for me for this one, it feels a little bit off balance because we have more water flow on the right side than the center and the left side and you could actually crop that whole section of waterfall out on the right side and still come away with a, a much simpler and i think more successful image and that's what i've done i've cropped this even though it's a, a really harsh crop uh, I, I, th I really think that the vertical works much better than the horizontal with everything in it again it comes down to trying to simplify things to the barest necessities to still tell that uh, that story. Now, unfortunately, the light didn't last very long. If it had done, I would have taken several uh, different compositions and I probably would have got round to taking the, the vertical in the center there, but I didn't, so I've had to crop it. Luckily, I'm using a, a camera with a very large sensor, so I'm able to do that without losing a ton of quality in the final image.
Hey everybody, quite the contrast in weather this evening. Uh, this morning it was just miserable and the day has progressively gotten better and better. And now we're at uh, an area called Elgol, which is quite popular with photographers I hear. Uh, but it's absolutely gorgeous because you get a fantastic view of the uh, peaks in the background here. They're very moody, kind of storm clouds and it looks like uh, the sun's going to kick off tonight so i think we're going to get a really good sunset which is just excellent so paul uh, my friend paul and i have come down to uh an area that i think has been photographed quite a bit there's a, a round rock down here we've called it the egg of elgol uh but it looks i don't know it, it looks really beautiful because you've got this round rock that kind of contrasts with the sharp edged rocks with lots of patterns and then of course we have the dramatic uh, clouds and mountains in the background so the light uh, there's some beautiful uh, evening light on the uh, on the cliffs surrounding the boulder and then of course we have the dark brooding clouds in the background so it's just absolutely gorgeous so no excuses for bad photography <laughs> tonight uh, now, as far as uh, photography goes, uh, what I did, I ended up putting a, a dark uh, polarizer on, which is a, a, a breakthrough photography filter, a, a, a circular polarizer, and it has a three-stop um, uh, ND filter built into it. So it's all in one, because I really wanted to slow that shutter speeds down to smooth out the water, because the problem with this shot I'm finding is that we have this beautiful foreground and the beautiful background but the middle is a little bit empty so i've smoothed out the water and i'm hoping that that'll you know come through in the photographs and make it a little bit more interesting rather than freezing the uh the wave action and then just over here there's some uh there's some beautiful uh sea thrift which is a, a wildflower that grows in between the rocks so i'm, I'm going to try and get some shots of the sea thrift um in the foreground with the mountains in the background as well but yeah what a what a great evening really is really is something Paul and I were certainly blessed with some great light on this night and it was probably the best light that we had on a whole visit to Sky. Those dark clouds with those brooding mountains in the background and of course we had the contrasting rocks in the foreground with their texture and the round rock in the immediate foreground. Now as far as exposure goes for this image here I did have a little bit of trouble because those clouds especially in the top left are just so bright so I took a number of exposures for the brightest areas in the frame and then of course the uh, the foreground and I had to combine a couple of images just to get the exposure just right once I'd done that then I went ahead and processed the image as I normally would Now I did also take a number of variations of this scene, including this image here, where I've got in much closer with a wide angle lens to really emphasize that round boulder. And I've also brightened it up a little bit to draw your eye to the boulder. Also, I decided to eliminate those clouds, those bright clouds, uh, totally out of the frame, just to simplify the image. But I'd be uh, really interested to know what your thoughts are. Do you like the closer up view or do you like the wider angle of this scene?
right. I think uh, I'm going to call it quits for tonight. We have a bit of a long drive back to the uh, the uh, Airbnb that I'm staying at. It's about an hour's drive, and it's uh, 10 o'clock right now. So, uh, brilliant day. Ferry pools this morning, and then the coastal stuff this evening. So, all in all, it's been a great day. So thanks ever so much for watching and uh, as always if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit that uh, thumbs up button and if you enjoy the the content on my channel please be sure to subscribe Oof. all right everybody thanks for watching bye for now